They call it the ultimate summer camp for trail runners. Welcome to day one of Trans Rockies Race. Welcome back to the second half of the Trans Rockies Run, featuring days four to six and starting off with the big climb of day four. Trans Rockies Day Four! <laughs> One. Let's do it. Another day, another dollar. Although we started on about three kilometers of gravel roads, the route quickly turned skywards as we headed our way up Horn Silver Mountain. This was similar to stage two in that it was an up and down route, but it was actually much steeper. Luckily at the top, the views that we were granted were once again splendid and we got to follow the ridge line for a little while so that we could enjoy those views for an extended period of time. However, as before, we had to turn and make our way downhill once again and find our way to the finish line along trails of loose rocks and stones, which made for some fun footing and great trail running. At the bottom, we were also treated to a walk through or run through the Weirman Creek, about a kilometer of water, no deeper than your knee, but often cold. And once you got through that finish line, the water was close by once again, so you could cool off those muscles and bones and recover a little bit. However, the highlight of the day was finishing off at Mango's for margaritas and fish tacos, famous in Red Cliff. Two, one, five, let's get out of town. Day five, Trans Rockies, heading from Red Cliff to Vail. Personally, I found day five to be one of the most challenging. Not only was it one of the longest at almost 40 kilometers again, but it also featured even more climbing than the previous long stage. Most of it was along the top and the ridges of a mountain heading over towards Vale, so we got to see and, and experience the back bowls of Vale, famous for its skiing, all along our route. The alpine meadows were beautiful with plenty of flowers to look at, which did take my mind a little bit off the pain, but it was a tough day, especially with that hot sun and at high altitudes. However, as usual, it was a beautiful day of running and you were extremely pleased to make your way down through these rocks at this drop off point and then through the final sections of the trail onto the finish line. We spent most of the day above 10,000 feet and that made for some low oxygen. Luckily you finally got a glimpse of Vail below and knew you were almost done. And there's home sweet home way down below in Vail. Steve Meyer with his next. Dead in with a 45330. Congratulations. And with that, it was time to start the final day of the race from Vale to Beaver Creek. Although the faces looked weary at the start line, there was also a quiet excitement building, knowing that this was the last day and that we'd soon finish our journey through the Rocky Mountains. Day six basically featured linking three cities Beaver Creek, Vale, and Avon through a series of mountain passes. It took us through some amazing aspen forests, which you can see here with beautiful white trees as we climbed up and over the mountain pass. After making our way to the top of Red and White Mountain, we had a nice long descent down Buck Creek, which took us all the way into Avon, through the roads of that town, and finally into the long climb back up to the top of Beaver Creek, and finally plunge down to the descent to meet our friends and other well-wishers at the finish line. The feeling when finally crossing that line and getting your medal was magical. So I made it here at the finish line, six days of running, got my belt buckle, finisher shirt, and a nice beer to celebrate. The beautiful skies here at Beaver Creek. The next three days of camping were just as exciting as the first three. Now that we've gotten to know all of our friends and fellow racers, things got even more fun. For example, at the end of one of the days, there was margaritas waiting for us, compliments of one of the racers who every year brings out his pump bottle of margarita for anyone who wants one. He's known as the GOAT, and he's a, quite a character. It was also really interesting watching our community take shape every single day. We'd get up, go running, and of course they'd have to tear down the entire tent city, move it to a new location, including a relaxation stations, the medical tents, the cooking tents, the kitchen tents, everything. As you can see here, we had 12 professional massage people on hand to help us with all of our aches and pains as well as rolling. And of course, the weather wasn't always perfect and when it did, it could be pouring. But as soon as that rain would end, we'd break out the campfires and have more fun again. And as you can see here on our last night of camping, there was a special barbecue treat for us with great portobello mushrooms, asparagus and the like. 
To cap things off, we had a full reception at one of the resorts at Beaver Creek where we celebrated all of our accomplishments and had an awards handed out for all of the winners of all the categories to be recognized in front of all the fellow racers. Well, that does it for me from this year's Trans Rocky Six Day Trail Run. I'm standing where the finish line was yesterday, but today it's been torn down and racers are making their way home. As far as the run goes, it was an amazing six days of trail running here in the Colorado Rockies. If you're looking for a destination race and a summer camp for adults, look no further than Trans Rockies.